Good morning and welcome. Here we are, 6 a.m. Hive Beach, sea's mirror flat. Sun's just starting to come up. As you can see, it's a very small tide today. What they call a neat tide. I feel like this might be the last hurrah for me to get a mackerel or two. I'd like to think we'll get a couple for our tea, so we'll give it a go. As you can see, it's a very small tide. That's a normal high tide mark up there. And high tide this morning is 6am, so we're just here at high water. Just set me rod up, haven't had a cast yet. As you can see, we're using our homemade hooks, little lures. So let's chuck it out there and see what we shall see. Be nice to think there's a few about. First couple of casts quite gentle because I haven't wet the line. Still going out there plenty far enough. 80, 90 metres perhaps. Start with a nice slow retrieve. I was quite shocked this morning how late it got light. I got up, I set the alarm for half past five and it was still pitch black. But this is absolutely the ideal time now for a mackerel. First light, no people about a high tide and we've just had a run of about a week of really nice hot weather. It's been a funny old season because every time the mackerel have sort of come into the shore anglers range we've had a blow of south westerlies or south easterlies and it's coloured the water up and of course that's no good at all for mackerel got to be clear because they're sight feeders. Oh, a few little scad jumping about just outside, about a couple of metres out I saw then. Always keep your eyes open when you're mackerelling because they do show themselves. Yeah, nothing wrong with the cast. Don't forget to vary your depths because we're fishing in three dimensions. The mackerel can be anywhere from the surface to the bottom, which is about 25-30 feet where I'm casting. So very retrieved. Sometimes lifting the rod high up, sort of 12 o'clock position, making the lures come up as high as they can out there. And sometimes a fast retrieve, keep the lures high up in the water. Of course only using a two ounce lead makes me able to do that. People using six ounces it plummets straight to the bottom as quickly as you like and unless the fish are thick out there you go through them too fast. They can be swimming over the top of you and you'd never know they were there. Some days you catch them very, very slow, dragging the, the lures just along, the, basically bouncing along the bottom. Let this one go a little bit deeper. the two ounce lead chance to get down there a little bit and then quite hard strokes back get the lures moving very high as I can a lovely pink sky going to be a Good day again today. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of fish, just little tiny fish pimping just in close to the shore. I don't think they're mackerel. Probably could be little garfish actually. 
You do get a few gars down here and they're always close. Look at that sky. Isn't that beautiful? Right, we'll try a very slow retrieve this time. Let it work round with the tide. There will be a little bit of tide out there, it won't be huge today. And of course, you know from the last video, the bites are savage, especially on a carp rod. You certainly know you've got them on. So you saw that little fish jump just then, probably not. He's only about two metres out but very small. But what's chasing it? Why is it jumping? Yeah, that is a glorious sky. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning, but I don't think it'll apply today. Come on, oh maid lures, do your stuff. I had the choice this morning to come here or go behind the castle at Sandgate. I've chose here simply because it's, uh, Sandgate's over broken ground, which is fine, because especially with the two ounce lead, I can keep the lead well up off the rocks. But I found with Sandgate, the mackerel are either there or they're not. There's no even between. Here, you usually, if they're, if they're patchy, you'll still get one or two. Whereas Sandgate Castle has always been a bit boom or bust. Right, we'll let this one sink a bit low. I reckon to cut, I reckon to sink it's probably about a, a foot a second, so I'll give it 15 seconds before I start the retrieve. We should be well down in the lower levels. Just nice positive sweeps of the rod. I'm reeling all the time because as I reel on the down push, I'm picking up the slack. It's only a little inexpensive carp rod, probably 30 quid brand new, not, not expensive. Reel, again, probably less than that. Of course, you must remember when you get home to put it under cold water, the reel, otherwise it'll corrode up, unlike fresh water. Doesn't take a few seconds, a little drop of oil, and it'll be good as gold for the next one. Before you go back to fresh water fishing with the gear, don't forget to change the line, because the line will be salty. And it does get some abrasions and little nicks as it comes across the stones and stuff.
I'll just have one little cast down along the shoreline, quite close in, just in case there's a bass or a gar. You can see how close I am, I mean that's about five foot out. And I won't work the lure like I do for mackerel, I'll just bring it in so it's basically like a little line of fish coming up the shoreline. I have had bass from what they call mackerel feathers before, not quite as often, but uh, it's not unknown. One more little chuckle on the sea, whoop, the shoreline. You see the fish are just pimp out there a few metres. I'll say they're only small fish and I don't know what they are. We've only got small hooks on, so. One more, just a little bit further out. Sea's absolutely clear, which is what you want. The fish are obviously a little bit too small. I expect, they're, as I say, they're either little, could be a little tiny uh, white bait, but there's none washing up. So what I'll do is I'll just switch off for the moment. Come back once I see if I can get a mackerel. Catch you in a bit.